of energy. You know, I am well because I utilize energy differently. Homeopathic medicine is energetic medicine. The process of digestion, in fact, is the breaking down of complex molecules, proteins, you know, all these things, very complicated, breaking it down through a series of digestive enzymes, all these things until it's finally released, not only even as the mouth, but as energy for the body to use. And when people, because sometimes, like last week, I spoke at the Raleigh Rally for Ron Paul. Really, it was a fired up kind of event, a lot of fun. A lot of people loved liberty, get together, a lot of young people, and everybody loved it. So I heard one guy in the back was a student, he was a brainiac, really smart guy. You know these guys are mental giants. Well, you had me on the freedom part, but you mentioned homeopathy, and that just all went to, like, you know, that's, that's crazy stuff. You know, and I just went back, listen, I don't need anybody to believe in my path of healing. That's not my point in even bringing it up, any more than it is my point to annoy a, a medical doctor who doesn't like homeopathy. It's not the purpose or point. But it's the reality of, do we embrace freedom enough to allow people to live differently than us as long as they don't violate our rights in the process? And these are very, I think, simple things. I think sometimes kids will even get it faster than adults would. And so I look at that energetic aspect of life itself, the utilization of energy, because that's what the process of digestion is, to break down those things to release the energy. Because when you're tired, you say I'm out of molecules. <laughs> Right? No, you're not energy. I need some more energy, right? And so that's what we're talking about. Energy is everything. Now, the whole concept of, uh, let's say, warfare is such that the most efficient means by which you can go to war is to not go to war at all, is just to get people to become defeated without even fighting. It's to enslave them. It's to utilize every aspect of their energy against them. And the fact of the matter is we're stuck in a system now, or apparently we are, where we're feeding a beast that enslaves us and we're wondering why it doesn't get better, right? And people are gearing up to take up arms, right? In the meantime, we just heard that this week they put in a request at the Department of Homeland Security for like 450 million hollow point 40 caliber bullets. Yep. Not the Army or the Navy, the Air Force Marines, the Department of Homeland Security. I mean, this could be the TSA for all we know. How are they able to do that? Who fed them? Who gave them the ability to do that? Now, you want to take up arms against that. I know there are a lot of warriors here who would be willing to do that. That's not the point in saying that. But what is the most efficient means by which you can destroy cancer? By killing it with chemotherapy and hoping that you don't kill the body at the same time? Or by... What is that? Well, I hear a lot of the things that are all fitting into what I'm about to tell you is that the most efficient means by which the natural world allows us to overcome cancer is by starving it. Simply by stop the cessation of feeding it. It can no longer do harm to you. And it's a non-violent, it's a peaceful approach, it's a peaceful means by which transformation can happen. I don't know how fast, but it's pretty impressive when you understand the concept of energy. And the Tenth Amendment is like that. The nullification movement is like that. It's a nonviolent movement. It simply says, no, you no longer have that power. It's not yours. Not that it ever was, but we sort of pretended it was. Sure, you can have that. Now, I nullified, if you will, a lot of these things and found ways to do things against the views, beliefs, or even sometimes the laws. Oh, my gosh, I broke laws. They were not laws. They were regulation. Something, you know, in, in most states the practice of medicine is written the laws are so broad and vague that if you tell your kid to eat whole grains instead of white bread because of constipation that you could be arrested for practicing medicine without a license yeah apparent now i'm not saying that that would happen but more and more we're seeing bizarre things happening uh, with uh, social services there was a recent report of a woman who had uh, birthed her baby in an ambulance on the way to the hospital in michigan you read this and the social worker there was uh, very upset with this woman who just gave birth because the woman was asking questions about what are you going to do to my baby, right? What are you doing? Which is a legitimate thing. I think if you just had a baby, why are you, what are you going to do to my baby? And that simply upset the social worker who was so lockstep in the religion of medicine that she basically called the police. They abducted the child, vaccinated the child against the will of the parent. I mean, this is the kind of thing that's happening now. Because we've acknowledged, or let's say we've relinquished our parental authority in so many ways, and we've made the government the mommy or the daddy, or the licensed 
representative of the government and the pharmaceutical industrial complex. So we have a bit of a ways to go, but it doesn't take 100% of us to do it. I don't even know what the percentage is. Some said it was 10, 11, 12, 13, I don't know. But it takes one. It certainly takes you at a certain point to stand up and say, no more, I'm nullifying you. Now, I mentioned that I was gonna talk about how getting nullified could also be helpful to you. Getting nullified. I went to, I have a, a friend of mine who's a toxicological dentist. She does mercury-free dentistry. You know that the FDA still says it's okay to put mercury into the mouths of babes in the form of a silver filling, which is 50% or more mercury, the second most toxic metal substance known to man. Somehow it's safe in your mouth, but the moment they pull it out of your mouth, it becomes hazardous waste. Right? I mean, they're called hazmat teams. Like, thank you, Al Gore, for mercury light bulbs. What would we do without those, right? Break those, same thing. Hazmat team has to come in. But I was in this dentist's office, she'll often uh, consult with me for patients that are very seriously, she pulls mercury out. And she said, I want you to meet this, this man, he's in, you know, he's in rough shape, he lost his job a while ago, just got diagnosed with a cancerous lesion on his neck, near his lymphatic tissue here. And he came out, told me his story, the dentist had pulled out a lot of mercury from his system, had a huge, huge problem there. He was getting some form of an alternative treatment, I was very encouraged to hear that, but my question to him is, well, when did this happen? What happened here? He says, yeah, it's very interesting. I, I lost my job and I lost my insurance and the very next day, I was diagnosed with this cancer. The very next day. And I said to, you, I said to him, my friend, God must have been smiling on you that day. Because the most dangerous thing you can have in America today is good health insurance. <laughs> Some people understand what I'm saying. I just want to tell me with tomatoes right now. The most dangerous thing, because health insurance is not health insurance, and in fact, had this man had coverage, he would have immediately been accepted into Sloan Kettering or the highest level of whatever they want, radiated, surgically altered, chemotherapized till dead. And the fact of the matter is, because he didn't have the money to go down that allopathic, government-sanctioned and approved route, he was alive that day, and he was on the road to recovery. He was on the mend. Now, don't get me wrong, insurance is, there is a legitimate form of insurance that, that covers unexpected catastrophes, right? That's different than what we're talking about here. And unfortunately, we've been led that, to believe that cancer is an unexpected catastrophe, but that's another misunderstood concept with these chronic degradation diseases, immune deficient, immune collapse diseases. These have been happening over generations now because of our embracing of a government that is so large that corporations with no allegiance to any nation or state would want to buy it. 